10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1, 0. Ignition. Liftoff of L87. Go, Falcon. Go, go. Vehicle pitching down range. Nominal first stage chamber pressures. We're now T plus 40 seconds into the NROL 87 mission. Falcon 9 is throttling down in preparation. Power and telemetry. In preparation for max Q, which will take place at T plus 1 minute and 12 seconds. Max Q, of, of course, being the moment in which the vehicle experiences the highest amount of aerodynamic pressure. Beautiful views of the California coast there in the background. Max Q. All right, there we heard the call out for Max Q. Everything looking good with stage one trajectory. Now in the next couple minutes, we have five events coming up in quick succession, starting with main engine cutoff, stage separation, stage one flip, second engine start one, and then the boost back burn. Main engine cutoff, as the start name suggests, we will throttle, or excuse me, we will shut down uh, all nine Merlin engines. The stages will separate. The first stage will actually flip over and conduct a boost back burn. Um, and that's what we have to do in order to fly the booster back towards land. And of course, during that time as well, we'll have second engine start one, where we will ignite the Merlin vacuum engine. Again, not a cloud in the sky, gorgeous liftoff from Vandenberg Space Force Base Space Launch Complex 4 East. First stage engine cutoff. Stage separation confirmed. Stage one boost back startup. All right, there you saw all of those crystal clear, beautiful views. That first stage now is performing the boost back fairing burn. Separation. And, back pull, and there pull we heard the confirmed. call out that fairing separation um, has been confirmed. Unfortunately, we're unable to broadcast that at the request of our customer, um, but we were able to confirm the deployment of that. We're now three minutes into launch and the next milestones coming up include the conclusion of the boost back burn, which we see right there on your screen, and that will finish at T plus uh, three minutes and 15 seconds. Stage one, boost back shut down. All right, there we heard call out that the boost back burn has completed. Our first stage will be attempting a land landing in just a few moments. One of the nice things about land landings is that we're not subject to ocean weather. Um, and it's pretty convenient to land the first stage uh, basically right next to where it lifted off from. However, our ability to exit, execute a land landing uh, really is dependent upon the customer's needs. Their mission trajectory and performance needed by the satellite is what determines if we can return to land. Most of the time, their requirements don't allow for a return to launch site, which is what we're performing today. Um, which is why we also developed the capability to land our first stages. Both vehicles on nominal trajectory. Good news there, both first and second stage um, reporting to have nominal trajectory. Um, so that's why we developed our ability to land our first stages out in the ocean with our drone ships. Now, in order to complete today's land landing, the first stage has two more burns left. Next up is the entry burn. And that's where we will reignite three of the Merlin engines on the first stage. That will help to slow the booster down as it re-enters the upper part of the Earth's atmosphere. That's a view there coming from inside the inner stage. We can see the, uh, the stage pusher there. Here we have a beautiful view. Um, I'm, I think that's probably one of the channel islands there 
on the right hand side of the screen. Uh, we can see two of the four hypersonic grid fins. We deploy those um, shortly after the stages separate and those grid fins help steer the vehicle during descent. You will also see that right there we just saw one like a, a puff of white gas. Uh, that is nitrogen gas from attitude control systems that help control the vehicle's orientation. So there we can see the booster is steering itself back to Vandenberg Space Force Base. Piece of ice there on the left-hand side. Absolutely stunning views today, both of liftoff and our landing attempt. As I mentioned before, Vandenberg typically has quite a bit of fog, so it's more common to hear a launch than see one from Vandenberg. So for those that were able to catch it, I'm sure it was a stunning sight. We are about 20 seconds away from the entry burn. Again, this burn is the second of three burns that we will be performing today. And this burn is designed to slow the vehicle down significantly. Both vehicles are on a nominal trajectory. So the booster is now basically coming through the thicker part of the Earth's atmosphere. So we're going to slow its velocity down with this entry burn. Stage one, entry burn, startup. There we can see that entry burn has begun and this will last for another few seconds. Stage one, entry burn, shut down. And we can see that entry burn has concluded. The vehicle continues to steer itself for a precise landing back at landing zone four at Vandenberg Space Force Base. The next burn we have is the landing burn. During the first stage landing burn, a single Merlin engine, the center engine, will relight and slow the vehicle stage down. Stage one, is saved. If you look closely, you should be able to not only see our landing zone, but our launch site as well. Stage Again, two FTS has saved. The landing zone is pretty close to our, our launch pad. Shortly before the vehicle touches down. Stage one landing burn startup. All right, we can see the landing burn has begun. Landing zone coming into view for the first stage. Again, this is the first flight for this booster and first landing attempt. Stage one, landing leg deploy. And as you can see, a picture perfect stage landing one. of this first stage booster, its first flight and first landing. This booster will be prepared for reflight on another NRO mission later this year. This also marks our 105th overall successful recovery of an orbital class rocket, including both Falcon 9 and heavy first stage landings. As I mentioned earlier, at the request of our customer, the National Reconnaissance Office, we are concluding our webcast coverage early today. We would like to thank the N we would like to hear the NRO for entrusting us with today's launch and a special thanks to the range and the Federal Aviation Administration for licensing support. For all those tuning in, thanks for watching and we'll see you tomorrow for our Starlink launch.